Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to be going through the process of making a paper cutting from this picture. It's a picture I took last year in Tokyo at the Meiji Shrine. It's one of the main gates there. Um, I took a whole bunch of pictures as I usually do and I thought that this one would look best as a paper cutting for a number of reasons. Um, a few different sizes of leaves that I can work from here. Um, it has the the gate as the main focal point here and a lot of things kind of pointing towards it so really putting the emphasis on the main gate there. So how I got to this point here um, where I can start drawing. So this is the picture just simply printed out and what I'll usually do is, so take this picture, just print it in black and white. If I'm going to be doing an 11 by 14 or an 8 by 10, I'll usually just work from that. But for this one, I wanted to make it a bit bigger, so I just take print this out, take it to Staples, and get it enlarged onto this. This is an 11 by 17 piece of paper. So the first step, and the hardest and most important step in making a paper cutting, is the drawing. So with this one, I kind of knew that these leaves over here I would be drawing out individually and cutting out each leaf. Um, the tricky part with this area here is going to be getting the shadow. Um, you can see some are dark, or some are light. Um, but I can already tell kind of the pattern that's already there probably won't work that well so I'll have to change that up a bit as I go. Um, these ones here as well I'll be drawing out individually. Um, the stones here I know I'll be doing individually. Um, the gate won't be that much of a challenge it's kinda self-explanatory um, but these leaves here are gonna be a bit challenging so typically um, if I'm doing trees they'll be either close enough where I can cut out the leaves individually as I will with this one or they'll be a bit further back where I can kind of just make a silhouette and so these ones aren't close enough to um, to draw and cut out individually and they're also not far enough like these ones here that I can make them into silhouettes so I'll just have to figure out how to do that as I go I suppose So this is the marker that I'll use to draw. I usually will start with the the leaves here, um, just because it's um, it's kind of a, an important part. It's also easiest, I find, to kind of do the leaves. There's going to be a lot of them, so just kind of drawing them individually like that. Um, I use this pen here, it's, I find it's the thinnest possible um, that I can use to draw, and these lines are the thickness, um, the, the thinnest possible that I can cut. If there's any thinner than this, the, um, the paper when I cut it, uh, it'll just kind of fall apart, it won't necessarily stay connected, so this, uh, this pen is just the thinnest I can work with yet still be able to cut. So from here, yeah, I'll just be drawing these leaves and then kind of doing doing the rest, figuring out a bit as I go. And I guess we'll see what happens. So here we have the finished drawing. Um, so you can see the leaves here I drew in individually as planned. Kind of get an idea of the size of those. Um, these ones here I might just kind of leave black, we'll see how it goes. I'll probably just cut all these first except for these and see if it looks looks good. If not, then I probably will just cut those as well. I decided to leave this one here as a silhouette. Um, I might cut a few more in there, but we'll see how it looks. So as I'm cutting, I can kind of just flip it over and, and check and see what it looks like. Um, so I'll be doing that as I cut. Um, as I said, the, uh, 
the gate here is not too complicated. Um, the people I think are going to look really well. I've been using more people in my works recently. They add a lot of um, life to the pieces and looking back at the woodblock prints, Japanese woodblock prints, there's always people in them so I figured they kind of know what they're doing and um, trying to emulate them. I've incorporated a lot more people into my works recently. Um, so this part, uh, I just kind of decided to draw it in with these lines here. So they're not individual leaves and they're also not kind of the, the silhouette here. And you can see in the original picture that they do kind of make these, these shapes. So kind of went with those. I'm going to be working with a few different kinds of greens here after the when I put the color in so that'll add a bit of depth to that and a bit of variation as well um, and also kind of had them going towards the the gate here to keep that as the the focal point um, so these will probably be a bit darker these ones here will be lighter uh, keeping in line with the, the original piece and this one as well will probably be a bit lighter than these uh, I didn't do much detail in this. Uh, I found that if you kind of just make the whole thing detailed, it takes away from from certain parts. So it's better to have some really small detail here, a bit here, and then having some other areas where there's not as much detail. It gives it kind of a better balance and more variety. Um, and so here, what I would have liked to have done is to just draw in every single little piece of stone, but um, if I were to do that, they would just look too big. It would be impossible to make them as small as they actually are in real life, so I decided to just kind of draw some lines there and give it a bit of gradation and depth going up that way. Um, so yeah, I'll be cutting it out essentially the way it is here, I might make a few changes as I go, but I think this is going to be going to turn out pretty well and will be pretty accurate to what the paper cutting is going to look like. And with this, there's still a lot of shading here, but if I flip it over, it gives a bit of a better idea as to what the black layer is going to look like, anyways. And that's the most important layer, the color. I can manipulate as I go with the black layer of the paper cutting because I can just slide it behind and see what it's going to look like before I actually glue it on. So from here I will tape the black piece of paper behind and I'll start cutting. So I've taped the black paper behind the drawing so I'll be cutting both layers at the same time. I use a 75 pound paper, which is fairly thick, especially if um, you're not used to it. But the reason I use such a thick paper is because I'll be gluing the, uh, the colored papers directly on it. And I find anything, any thinner paper, um, they'll kind of buckle or they won't take the glue, um, or they just won't hold the colored paper as well. So the knife that I use... Uh, this is the case that I've been using since day one, so for about 15 years now. Uh, the blade itself is on a 30 degree angle, which is different than a typical X-Acto knife blade. Um, you can see the difference there, I hope. Um, and so it just allows me to get into the really detailed areas. And this is the cutting mat I use. Um, I always stock up in Japan because I have not found a place that sells it in Canada. Um, and so typically I'll start, the best thing to do is start from the middle, unless of course there are these really tiny detailed pieces, in which case I'll start there. And I'll probably do a few and then when I just can't stand it anymore I'll move over here and then I'll just move back. But to start with, this is kind of the priority here. 
and then I'll probably end up doing um, the gate last. So these bigger pieces where there's going to be more cut out, I will always do last um, because with that much missing, um, the structure of the paper is um, not as strong. So for each one of these smaller cuts, it's going to pull a bit on the paper. So if I were to take that out, this piece here might tear a bit. And so I'm going to be cutting out everything that isn't black. So starting over here. Is there so it kind of gives you an idea how small those cuts are there so I can't do the whole thing like this because I do need to look at it a lot closer it makes it a lot easier so I'll be tilting the table up and we'll be cutting it out that way so I've finished cutting the black layer of paper uh, which is the most important part of the paper cutting um, so this is the initial drawing and I've cut out everything that isn't black. So they were taped together. I've taken the tape off and so this is what the drawing becomes. And so this is the black paper here. So you kind of have an idea of how big that is pieces there and so this was about five five or six hours of cutting so now I will be adding the colored paper uh, it took a little bit of time to just decide which colors to work with here um, for this side I'm gonna go with a bit bit of a brighter green up here and a bit darker down there. Um, when I'm putting the colored paper behind the black paper, um, so something like this is fairly bright on its own, but once it's in behind the black paper it gets significantly darker. So I tend to choose something that seems a little bit brighter at first glance, um, just so it'll look um, so it'll look good behind the black paper. If it's too dark, then um, you can't really see the color when you, unless you're standing up close, and most people won't do that. So I tend to choose a bit uh, lighter color. Uh, these papers I bought in Japan, all handmade. I do use these as much as possible. I'll stock up when I'm over there. So use this one for those leaves. One for those leaves there. Obviously, make the branches brown or the tree trunks brown. Um, so the leaves I'll do first, um, just because it's a bit more important to get those colors right. Uh, this here and then uh, the clothes and the umbrellas aren't as important. I'll just kind of choose the colors based on how they look against the green. Um, for these trees over here, I'll be using this bit of a darker color there and combine with this one. Probably mix it up a little bit just to liven it up and then use a bit of a brighter green for these trees up here in the background of the picture. For the browns, I'm going to use these other uh, handmade papers I bought in Japan <clears throat> for the trees. Um, these ones, they're really nice and rough. They have a really good texture to them. Um, they really left the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but the, the grain from the trees when they are making the paper, they didn't um, filter it out really. So as far as I know, these are the, I'm not sure what you would call it, but uh, Grains from the trees there when they're making the paper, and then for the uh, 
the gate here I'll be using this paper so the trees obviously aren't uh, finished wood but this gate is it it is sanded down obviously and, and cut so I'll be using this one it has a bit of a texture to it so in behind there um, I guess one note on the color so this is the initial picture that I'll be working from more or less um, but you can see here it's a bit of a different it's darker up top but lighter on the sides there I have before used um, for something like this use a darker color there and then a lighter one there but for something that's should be all one color um, anytime I've ever done that it just looks really odd when it's finished if I were to have a darker colored paper there versus a lighter colored paper there it just doesn't look right so that's why I'm going to be using this same color for the the whole gate and then some gold for those little pieces there so this one has a grain on it so I'll be putting it uh, vertically for there and then for these cross pieces I'll be cutting pieces out that go horizontally um, and yeah I have a bunch of different grays and uh, beiges so after the greens are done I'll just see whatever looks best against there so the way I cut out the colored pieces to put in behind here um, the first step is to make a photocopy and so this photocopy is the exact same size as this paper cutting. Can line it up there. Uh, okay, okay, there we go. As you can see, it's the exact same size. So what I'm going to do is use this photocopy, put each of the colored pieces in behind, just cut them out individually, and then glue them to the the black piece of paper. And so again, that's why I needed to, or why I use a thicker piece of black paper, um, because with the thin paper it doesn't quite stick as well. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Just cutting that here. So the first piece I'm going to be cutting out. Um, I always start from the side and work in. Um, I'll explain why in a second here. So the first piece I'm going to be cutting out is here. So if it's a large piece I will uh, sometimes tape it to the back of this to hold it in place but this one isn't too intricate so just hold it up to the light and make sure that it's covering where I want to cut out. And so there's a lot of um, black around there so I don't have to get in too close to see the really detailed parts. So. I cut out a piece that's going to fit in exactly in there and, and isn't going to cross over into these other areas which I will be making a different color. So this is now garbage. because I'm taping it to the back. So for a piece like this, just line it up to where it's supposed to be. There, like that. So 
stick a piece of tape to hold it in place, and then just get a scrap piece of paper here, slide it underneath. black paper here. I'm going to take this piece out that has the glue. I'll use other sections of that later. Got a clean piece of paper. Just add a couple Kind of all there is to it. So there, that um, colored piece is now there. So the reason I start from the side is because this way I can the piece that goes in there I can um, tape on top of there, glue on top of there. There might be a little bit of overlap. Um, it also helps kind of keep the the um, the piece together. If I were to start from the middle it would be a bit harder to kind of get the scrap piece of paper in there and lay it down and lift it up um, <clears throat> without getting glue on these parts or tape on these outer parts if I'm working outwards. It's a lot easier to work going to the inside just so I can um, I don't have to be as precise when I'm cutting so for this piece here, that would go in there. I don't have to be as precise, so I could, if I needed to, kind of go over top of that. Um, I wouldn't have to cut necessarily so detailed into those lines there. Um, with this one it's not too bad there, but for some pieces, like in here, it's easier if I can just kind of overlap the previous piece rather than having to cut along those detailed lines each time. So the color for this piece will probably it'll probably take two to three hours to add all the colored pieces, um, and so yeah, that's kind of all there is to it to add the colored pieces in. It's a lot easier. Um, when I can look a bit closer to the, the paper cutting, so I'll do that now. Okay, so I've done putting almost all of the colored pieces on the back. Um, just let a couple, left a couple here to show um, again just how it's done. So as uh, so, the last couple I've left here are the sky. So I've done some watercolor pieces to add for that. So, again, just putting the scrap piece underneath.
more or less let's do it for the color piece so you can see each one of these uh, pieces here so for the trees that there is for that tree there and so each one of these the umbrellas is each its own piece um, so as usual I've learned a lot along the way I think this turned out pretty well Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below, and I will see you next time.